everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here, my name is Rachel, and today is an update in my project 10 pan, where I'm panning 10 products on a sort of rolling basis, so as I'm using things up, I'm rolling in new stuff to try and to finish, and I'm just bit by bit reducing my collection. Now before we get into the meat of the video, as you can see, the elephant in the room, my appearance has changed somewhat. I have got some hair extensions in. They're just, um, they're not permanent hair extensions. I've had those before. They're just clip-ins. At the minute, my hair is at a sort of a weird point in time and it's neither one length nor the other. It's neither here nor there, in my opinion anyway, because it's not quite a pixie cut still and it's not quite a bob yet. It's just kind of just there. So I've been thinking about getting some clipping extensions for a while and as chance would have it, a brand reached out to me to see if I wanted to try theirs and these are them. They're by Irresistible Me and they sent me them and I think they look really, really good actually. I don't think I am the best at putting in hair extensions. As you can see, I'm not the best at blending my hair into them, although my hair is like, I am on second day hair at the minute, it needs washing like there is. <laughs> There's no excuse, my hair is quite dirty. Um, I need to wash it, I feel like a scruff right now. But they have blended in really well. I find it really difficult to colour match because I've had professional extensions before where they take different strands of different colours. I think to put about three different colours in when I had them permanently. And these are obviously just all one colour. And I don't think the colour match is too bad. Like in the light, as you can see, is warmer than my actual hair. I've got very, very cool toned hair. But just sort of at a little bit of a distance, you can't tell too much. If I went out in the sunlight, you'd be able to tell. So what I've done is basically just put layers and layers of these hair extensions in my hair. That's what they look like. So they're, cut, they're sort of like a tape hair extension. And what I can tell you about them so far is that the clips on them are super strong. I've had clipping extensions before as well, and I always find that they slip and slide off your hair shaft and then become visible and you have to keep readjusting them throughout the day. That doesn't happen with these. The clips are extremely, extremely good quality and I'm enjoying wearing them so far. If I just sort of kneel up, you can kind of see. This is the length. These are the 18 inch. And it's a nice length on me. This is how I'm hoping that my hair will go eventually. And the hair is super soft. It is real human hair. And, you know, you can just treat it like your own as well. So I think they look really, really beautiful. So if any of you guys are in the market for some hair extensions, I will leave a link down below so you can go and check out theirs. They are super beautiful. They've got loads of different styles and lengths and colours for different budgets, hair and styles. They also do full lace wigs and I will leave a link down below in the description box. It's not an affiliate link. If you do decide to buy some, I do not earn any money from it, but I just thought I would pass that on. So now let's get straight into the project pan update. Right. There is a lot of updates for this month. Um, I didn't do one last month. I think it's about two months since I've done an update, which might be kind of why there's a lot of updates, but let's just kind of go in order. So the very first product in this project is the Dandelion Twinkle Highlighter by Benefit, and there's a lot of progress with this so far. If I just show you a close-up, I will do an overlay just showing you in more detail, but I have hit pan right the way to the top of the grid, and it's now in kind of a U-shape around the pan, and at the last update it weighed 43 grams altogether. That's including the packaging. I just put it on the scales and that's how much it weighed. It was 43 grams. It now weighs 42 grams. I don't feel like I have used up a whole gram of product because there is only three grams in the whole thing when it's brand new. So I feel like it must have been like a, it must be a rounding thing. It's not a very precise set of scales that I've got. It's not, it's just kind of a kitchen scales for measuring out ingredients. So it's not super, super scientific and accurate. So I think what it, what it must be is that maybe it had like 42.7 grams in last time and maybe it's got 42.3 grams now so it's rounded it down. I don't think that I've used a whole gram whatsoever in, in that time. This is still 
a really enjoyable product for me. I'm using it today on my cheekbones. So far so good with this. I feel like I am making steady progress. I think it'll still take a real long time to use it up. Benefit products kind of do, but it is possible because I have used up a Benefit Hula Mini Bronzer before and a Benefit Dandelion um, blush before, full size. So it is possible, but it does take quite a long time in my experience. The next product is a very happy update and it is the end of my Black Opal True Colour Pore Perfecting Liquid Foundation. At the last update, I was up to this line here and it's now all completely gone. I have tried to take the lid off of it to try and scoop out the product inside and that worked to a certain extent but unless you're putting like a concealer brush in there to try and scoop it all out it's really not going to happen and there's not even enough accessible product left in it to do a full application so I've just called it empty I don't want to get into that business of making life hard for myself I have used as near as damn it the 30 milliliters you can get way more out of these type of vacuum containers than you can a normal bottle so I'm not going to beat myself up about the tiny minuscule amount of product that's left in it. I would buy this again in the future. It's very unlikely for a long time that I'm going to be that dark unless I got a fake tan and it was like an extra dark one. But the actual formula of this foundation is really, really nice. And I find it very, very similar to the EX1 Invisiwear foundation, which is one of my favorite foundations of all time. I don't actually have one at the minute because I have so many foundations and I'm not repurchasing any until I've downsized the collection and, you know, my low buy is over. Since that's finished, I need to roll something in in its place. And the thing that I'm going to roll in in its place is a bronzer. And I'm rolling in my Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel. I'm wearing this today as well. And as you can see, I've got a little bit of pan in the middle already. So I've got a good amount of headway with this. A lot of you guys asked me on previous videos and on Instagram how I use this and there's a number of ways that I use it because it's so easy to use in my opinion that you can get away with putting it on after you've just put your foundation on. I'll just like leave my foundation for like a minute just to kind of sit on my skin and then I'll take like a synthetic haired brush. You really do want a synthetic hair when it's coming to a cream product like this because it just applies it so much better and so much more evenly. This is just a Real Techniques um, contour brush and it's perfect for getting into that area so I just dip it into the product and I swirl it in the areas that I want and then what I'll do is I will generally go over with a translucent powder over my whole face and I will then just put a bit of a powder bronzer on top so you can either put it on, on top of your foundation wet or today I actually set my foundation with a translucent powder and then applied this over the top and it doesn't skip it doesn't grab it doesn't pull your foundation off it's not a seriously wet formula it's kind of like a powder type of cream so it doesn't actually um, skip or anything on your foundation that is one of the reasons I love this because sometimes I'll just absentmindedly set my face and then think oh no I wanted to put that on not a problem you can do so I love this product. The third product in this project is my Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue and this was almost finished in the last update as well and as you can see I've chopped the end off of it and I have scooped all of the product out of the tube. That's what I'd like to do with any sort of tube products is do that and chop the top off it just so I can get out every bit of accessible product because what you find with these tubes is when they stop actually dispensing out there's still a lot of product that you can get in there but it just doesn't push out when you squeeze the tube so I do like to chop the end off it and scoop it out myself. I did give my thoughts in my last update on this and I wouldn't buy it again just because it doesn't suit my style or what I require from a foundation. Technically it is a tinted moisturiser but it does build up eventually to give some coverage, but it's just, it's not designed for people like me who want a bit of higher coverage. This is just designed for somebody who wants to have an easy makeup day where you just put it on and it looks like your skin but better. So in its place, I am rolling in another product and it's kind of a weird product, but 
given the time of year we're coming into, it's something that I'm really, really passionate about. And it is my La Roche Posay Anthelios XL Anti Shine 50 Plus Sunscreen. So this is Factor 50 Plus. And it, what I like about it is it comes in kind of a pump sort of tube, like the Too Faced um, Hangover RX Primer. And it comes out really easily when you just pump. And what I like about this is it's a sunscreen and it doesn't appear to clog my pores. I don't have a bad reaction to it and it just it doesn't feel greasy like a sunscreen. I put this on before my primer and what I like about it is when you've put it on it just kind of dries down and it, you don't feel it too much on your skin which is something that I really enjoy and if you've got particularly oily skin this will help to keep it under control because it is anti-shine so there is probably I would say just over half of this left and I tend to buy these in bulk when they're on offer because this is about 16 or 17 pounds for a 50 milliliter bottle. It's what I use when I go on holiday and I like to use it year round if I can. I've not been so good about that recently but we're coming into spring and summer now and I need to make sure that I'm going to be better with it so by putting in a project it will ensure that I do use it. So the next product is my Gucci eyeliner pencil and it is the Impact Longwear Eye Pencil in the shade Coco. I have not a lot to report on this. I have dropped the ball with this one. I've probably used this about five times since last update and I haven't even needed to sharpen it. So it's exactly the same size as it was last time and that is a bit disappointing. I have completely forgotten about this product and I think that that's just one of the dangers with doing multiple project pans. You just, I need to put up like a chart so I know everything that I should be trying to work on and then I can't drop the ball and forget about products like I have with this one. It's just a matter of getting myself more organized. I'm going to hopefully organize my filming room and get everything looking tidy and just sort of you know clean clean room clean mind sort of thing and I really do need to remember to use this a bit more I've not really got much of an excuse because I do use um I do use neutral eyeshadows quite a lot so I must say I'm a little bit disappointed with myself that I haven't used this more the next product I don't have it with me and it was my Dermalogica intense repair eye cream I think it was called it was a little sample size eye cream from Dermalogica and the reason I don't have it is because I have thrown it away and I've thrown it away because I had an intense reaction to it I had been using it for a couple of days and I just all of a sudden got eczema all over my eyelids and my eyelids felt sore and itchy and crusty and it was just horrible so I thought right I'm just gonna get rid of it I didn't know if it was one expired or two if I've just got a bad reaction to it I I have not been able to use Dermalogica products for a couple of years now I had to give away my toner I had to give away the cleanser because my face has become super super sensitive since being on Accutane and a lot of the Dermalogica products didn't agree with me anymore and this is one of those. I don't know why I thought it would still work for me, but apparently not. And I did get eczema all over my eyelids. So I just took an executive decision and threw it away. That of course means that I've got to put something in its place because I have an empty spot in the lineup. And what I'm going to do is introduce something that I know definitely works for me without a reaction and it is a skincare product still and it is the Dove Purely Pampering Indulgent Body Lotion and I've probably got about three quarters of this left. This was in a gift set that I got for Christmas and it just smells so so yummy. If you like the sense of shea butter and vanilla you will love this i what i like to do with this is put it on after i've had a bath or a shower and i will kind of apply it all over my body and just leave it on leave it to soak in while i'm drying my hair and then i will get dressed and i just love this my skin feels like a baby's but when I use this. The next product that I've got is my Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder and here it is. It is completely finished. This is just a little bit of staining on the actual pan. I have no idea why that happens but it really really annoys me and I haven't taken the initiative just to give it a little polish over. It is just empty. It's going into my empties pile. I'm trying to keep track of my empties throughout the year so at the end of the year I can see how much I've actually used up. At the last update this whole compact 
weighed 41 grams and it now weighs 39 grams that's obviously taken into account the packaging but that means that there was about two grams of product left in it which is what I thought myself would I repurchase this potentially but I think I do prefer just a loose powder it's for under my eyes that's what I was using this for and I found that it was just a little bit too temperamental for me sometimes I, I just could not get the balance right with it and I think it's something to do with the combination of what concealer I use with it because I only use it on that area of my face and sometimes I would get the balance of how much powder to put on every day and sometimes I would just absentmindedly be applying and put too much on and it just looked like crepe city so I wouldn't repurchase it again just because I feel like it is too difficult to make it look nice on me and I don't want to be spending money on a product that you know I have to put that much effort in and that much thought in order to make it look nice so I'd rather just go with a loose powder for that area of my face so that leaves me with another product that I need to put a replacement in my project pan for and I am going to replace it with a wet and wild eyeshadow single and this is in the shade nutty I'm wearing it all over my eyelids today and I think it's such a gorgeous gorgeous shade it's not one that I would have thought to have worn um but it's really nice on its own. It's quite close to my skin tone. It's got a little bit of a bronziness to it and it's got a bit of a sheen to it. I'm just kind of looking in the mirror, just looking at it and evaluating. But I do think that this is a great eyeshadow for a one and done sort of eyeshadow look. I do have a little bit of a deepness going on in my crease, but I would be comfortable wearing this as a one and done eyeshadow. That's not the sort of thing I would usually do for my makeup. I tend to like to play with multiple shades and finishes, but if I just wanted to do something really, really simple, this eyeshadow would look great for it. So I want to start getting some use out of that and maybe even have my goal just to hit pan on it because it's a lot to use up. But I want to start pushing myself out of my comfort zone with regards to styles and just wearing different things and just playing around with different sort of makeup looks. And I think that this is a good way of doing it. This is a very subtle look. Subtle isn't the type of thing that I would want to wear all the time, but I am enjoying this makeup look today. So that is one of the reasons that I want to put this in the project. The next product is my Benefit Gold Rush Blush Mini. And as you can see, there's a lot of progress with this. I've kind of deepened the pan on it and the pan is kind of spreading out across the whole grid. It's just going thin in so many places now. I still think there's a lot of this product left to use up and I think it'll take a while to do that. But I think the fact that I've used up my Too Faced blush completely the one that's in my pan 19 in 2019 I think that makes it a lot easier because this is the only blush that I am now sort of working on at the minute and I think that, that really really helps the next product I have used once since the last update and it's my Bondi Sands Australian Tan Everyday Gradual Tanning Milk and you can kind of see there it's all gathered at the bottom. I haven't used this because I haven't really think, been thinking about tanning but now that we're getting into a bit of warmer weather, getting some nice sun on us and it's got me thinking about using it again so I think I am going to be applying it this weekend. I think if I started applying this daily it'd be used within a week so I think I definitely need to do that, get it out of my collection because I have other tanning um, products that I want to be using and but it's one of those things I don't always want to do a tan and I've not been feeling it at the minute but I do feel a little bit disappointed with myself for not using this this does smell gorgeous and it feels nice on the skin and it keeps you moisturized so let's just see I think that this should be gone by the next update or at least that's my hope because there's no real excuse for not using this the next product I actually forgot to mention in my last video my last update I actually only mentioned nine of the ten products so bit of a letdown there I'm so sorry and it is my YSL um, pure couture lipstick in beige tribute there is a bit of an update with it I've not used an awful lot though but I've been using it during the day at work that's why I don't have it with me because I've left it at work and what I do is I tend to reapply it during the day after my initial lipstick in the morning has worn off and I do love the formula I love how creamy and lovely it just feels on my lips but I'm so sorry I, I don't have it with me at the minute the final product that I am working on I have actually used it up and it is my bitter start pan in my cocoa blend palette by Zoeva I've used it up completely now and I'm super super happy I did want to get that used up 
up it was one of those shades it's just such a staple shade and it was just so easy to use up to be honest it's got a great formula it is super brightening and it's just great for if you want to have a matte highlight in your inner corner or on your brow bone or if you just want to set your base on your eyelids and I really enjoyed using that. It makes me want to work on this palette a little bit more. I mean, who knows? I will um, be shortly putting up a video for you guys to pick my Pan That palette for the next year because my Jaclyn Hill palette um, project's almost over. So maybe this will be one of the contenders, who knows? So because I've got that used up, it does mean we've got another opening in the lineup and the product that I'm gonna roll in is my Wet n Wild Max Fanatic Cat Eye Mascara. It's got one of those weird ones with a curved sort of side and like, you know, like a cat eye sort of thing. You can kind of see there. It's kind of like a scoop. It looks a bit like an ice cream scoop to me. Um, and the reason I want to put this in the project, it's not far off um, going bad. I've had it open for a little while. Probably had it open for about two and a half months now. So it's probably quite close to going bad. So I want to make sure that I'm using this as much as possible so that I can get as much as possible used up of it before it goes bad. I do like this mascara. I probably would not repurchase it. It's not as good as the Essence um, False Lashes Mascara, um, the purple one I think it's called, the Extreme Volume and Curl one. It's not as good as that one and I think I would choose that over this every single time. But it isn't a bad mascara, I am wearing it today and it seems to give a good amount of length and volume and a little bit of curl so it's not too bad. We've had a lot of progress this month, I feel like I have excelled in some areas with these products and I've let myself down with a few of them but that's just the way it goes with Project Pan. You kind of get stuck into some areas sometimes and neglect other products and then you just learn, you reflect. That's why it's so good to do these videos because I can reflect on the stuff that I'm not using as much and it serves as a reminder to make sure that I use it more before the next update. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!